I'm Richard Clark. I record these talks every day as a way to deepen my inquiry. Listen each day and deepen your own practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from talk 452. Mr. Dar, ICS, a high officer, and his wife, both young, highly cultured, and intelligent, are on a visit here. But they fell ill since they arrived here. She desired to know how meditation could become steady. Maharshi, what is meditation? It consists in expulsion of thoughts. All the present troubles are due to thoughts and are themselves thoughts. Give up thoughts. That is happiness and also meditation. Questioner, how are thoughts given up? Maharshi, the thoughts are for the thinker. Remain as the self of the thinker, and there is an end of thoughts. In this dialogue, Mr. Dar and his wife, both intelligent and cultured, visit Sri Ramana Maharshi and ask about steadying their meditation practice. She wants to know how to achieve steady meditation, and the Maharshi responds by questioning the nature of meditation itself. He explains that meditation involves the elimination of thought, suggesting that thoughts are the root of present troubles and will continue to bring trouble in the future. By giving up thoughts, you achieve happiness in meditation. The Maharshi's response gives clear instruction of what you're trying to do in meditation, that the whole aim is the cessation of thoughts. The questioner then asks how thoughts can be given up. Ramana's answer is profound. Thoughts are tied to the thinker. So to eliminate thoughts, you must remain as the self that knows the thinker. You eliminate thoughts by getting rid of your identification with the thinker. This means recognizing and abiding as the true self, which is beyond the thinking mind, beyond the thinker, which knows the thinker. When you abide as the self, thoughts naturally cease since you have ceased your identification with the thinker. As he typically does, Ramana responds to the question by investigating what is behind the question and provides a new context in which to view it. This dialogue encapsulates the essence of self-inquiry. The Maharshi says that mind and its thoughts are the source of suffering. Happiness and true meditation come from transcending these thoughts, quieting thoughts, and moving past the thinker. By identifying with the true self, you dissolve the ego and its associated thoughts, resulting in inner peace. Ego dissolves with the discovery that it was never real. It is not real now and was never real to begin with. It was just an unchallenged assumption about who you are, about your identity. 
with inquiry, you investigate and then start challenging the assumption. You gain knowledge of yourself, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is the base of liberation. The self is central to the Maharshi's teachings. The self is pure consciousness, untainted by the mind's fluctuations. This is who you are. The ego, on the other hand, consists of the false identification with the body and mind, which generates a continuous stream of self-referential thoughts, which in turn become desire and suffering. The Maharshi advises that by investigating your idea of your own identity, you will find the underlying self. Then you can dismantle this false identification and achieve a state of thought-free awareness, which is true happiness and meditation. Ramana's guidance here is practical. Instead of battling each thought individually, which can be an endless and exhausting process, he directs you to the root cause, the thinker or the ego. <clears throat> Not to battle all thoughts, just one thought, the I thought, by questioning and understanding the nature of the thinker, you can transcend thoughts entirely. This is the crux of self-inquiry, seeking the source of the I-thought and realizing the self. In summary, this dialogue with Mr. Dar and his wife highlights a core teaching of Ramana Maharshi. True meditation is being free from thoughts, which is naturally achieved by abiding as the self. This teaching encourages turning inward and inquiring into the source of thoughts, which is the ground of being in which thoughts rise and fall and seem to exist. The self, abidance as the self, is lasting peace and happiness. So know yourself and be always free and at peace. In 40 verses on reality, Ramana Maharshi explains the nature of the self, the ultimate reality, and self-inquiry. My new book, with my comments and inquiry questions, opens these teachings up and brings them into your practice and experience. Available now from Amazon. Link in the video description. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with a comment.